I just wanted to start off with a correction from the last video. I just note that this, I, I had a theta here, a Laplacian of uh, uh, theta, when I should have had alpha. And uh, I did mention it. I did see it right away in the, uh, in the video. But uh, I just wanted to, to point this out. This would be the equation that you should write down. This would be for the compressional wave. Uh, disturbance, and this would be for the shear wave disturbance. And of course, we get these different um, factors out here in front of the second uh, temporal derivatives. And uh, remember, those uh, those factors uh, are related to the, in this case, the compressional wave velocity, lambda plus two mu, square root of lambda plus two mu over rho, and the shear wave velocity, the square root of mu over rho. Uh, lambda is the Lame parameter, mu is the shear rigidity, and rho is the density. So, and one of the reasons we've been looking at these wave equations from different perspectives is uh, that we've seen these constants come out in different forms. And so we can, we can see that the, the, the approach that we take to developing the wave, the wave equation will give us uh, different constants depending upon uh, the approach that we're taking. So, here we're going to take yet another approach to the derivation of the wave equation. We're going to look at it from variations in pressure uh, in, in a different way than we did the last time. Uh, we're going to be looking at the relation, you know, remember we came up with this relationship between pressure changes and the fractional volume changes. And so we had the ratio of P over the fractional volume change, delta V over V, in response to uh, uh, deformation associated with the propagating wave front. This was also equal to uh, Young's modulus over 3 times 1 minus 2 times the uh, Poisson's ratio. And this constant is the bulk modulus. Um, so we, we can see that um, P is also therefore going to be equal to uh, the bulk modulus times the fractional volume change. And um, <clears throat> we do point out that the use of some of these constants, and I, you know, you know this from your own, uh, from your own experience. Uh, I do, probably don't need to mention it again, but K can will show up, you know, sometimes in the solution to the wave equation as, uh, as the um, uh, wave number two pi over lambda. So, but we should be using it uh, at least for now uh, as the bulk modulus. Now. We're coming back to this diagram, and we're looking at it a little, a little bit differently. We've got, uh, we're going to be thinking of it in terms of the pressure. So, you know, it's really the stress. Uh, we've got, uh, let's say, an ambient pressure. This could be high pressure, a high pressure re region. And as the wave propagates through this, this bar, we go from a high pressure, ambient pressure, to high pressure, to low pressure. But we're looking at it in two states of time here, so P of T and P of T plus delta T. Uh, this is our, let's say, our original volume. This is the deformed volume, V plus delta V. And um, so we're, we're, we're using this relationship between the applied pressure and the fractional volume change, that P is equal to minus uh, the bulk modulus times the fractional volume change. And just, just as a reminder, again, we're using P as a incremental pressure, a pressure change, and I uh, don't need to repeat that again. So, um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of this expression, the temporal derivative, so that we have dP dt is equal to minus K d dt of delta V over V. Now, taking a look at this, look at this diagram, here's the uh, displaced uh, volume. Now we're taking a look at, uh, here's our initial volume, we're referring to these parameters a little bit differently than, than we did before. So here's this volume element and we're assuming that it's displaced so that this face is now over here a distance delta x and that the change in the volume, uh, this delta v, is represented by this. Uh, and greatly exaggerated, the, this should actually be smaller than than, you know, a fraction of this. Uh, but this is our, our change in volume. And because we're, we're using a unit cross-sectional area, we'll just assume that our delta V is equal to a delta chi. And so we're coming back to the use of this uh, 
uh, parameter chi, which we used earlier in our initial development of the wave equation to represent the relative displacement in the x direction. In this case of a unit uh, area surface bounding a displaced volume element with relative volume change delta v over v. So since we have a unit cross-sectional area, this just turns out to be delta chi over delta x. That would be our uh, delta v over v. And so, you know, we're, we're really assuming that these are infinite, infinitesimally small displacements, and it's kind of hard to represent them accurately in the diagram, but um, our, our delta chi delta x we can represent in those, uh, in, a, in, in the limit uh, that uh, uh, delta x goes to zero is d chi dx. And then if we substitute back into the proceeding, we get the dp dt, the temporal derivative of the pressure change is equal to uh, minus k d dt delta v over v. And we're substituting in this uh, d chi dx uh, for delta v over v. The order of differentiation does, doesn't make any difference in this particular case, so we can uh, uh, move the uh, partial with respect to x on the outside here and uh, take the derivative of chi with respect to t so that you can see that we now have a velocity term here. And it, so we have this dp dt is equal to minus k times the gradient of the particle velocity minus k dv dx. Now we're using this v dot here uh, probably just during this, this uh, video. Um, we'll talk about this, this some more, but for now just remember that we came up with these uh, characteristics of wave propagation. Um, so we obtained from this relationship here basically that we have the derivative of the um, minus dp dx is equal to the um, acceleration, the particle, the particle acceleration, or the temporal derivative of the particle velocity. So, and then also we could add to this list of characteristics here the uh, uh, term that we just came up with up here, uh, the PDT is equal to minus k uh, dv dx. And here this floating particle velocity down here um, didn't get caught up in the animation, but uh, just, just want to highlight that in the future we're going to abandon this v dot uh, notation here for particle velocity, and we'll simply use little v for particle velocity and capital V for the interval or wave propagation velocity. So, so we're going to continue to use v dot in this, in this video, and then you probably won't see it again. So that's what this v dot is. It's the velocity of the little particles as opposed to capital V, which is the velocity that the wave is propagating through the medium. So now we're, this is our starting point here. We're going to take the derivative of this uh, whole expression here with respect to x. And that gives us the second spatial derivative of the uh, pressure changes, which would then be equal to rho zero times d dx of dv dot dt. And uh, again, we can switch these um, uh, back around. So we have rho zero d dt dv dx. And then using this earlier result that we have here, uh, that uh, dv dx is, uh, or the dpt, dp dt is equal to minus k dv dot dx, substituting for dv dot dx in the above, we have this relationship here. So we have the second spatial derivative of the uh, pressure changes be equal to minus rho zero. This would be the, kind of the ambient or the undisturbed density of the medium over the bulk modulus. Uh, this is going to be the second derivative uh, of the pressure changes. So in the end, we come up with another wave equation. Second spatial derivative of the pressure would be equal to the ambient um, undeformed density of the medium over the bulk modulus times the second temporal derivative of the uh, pressure changes. So now here we'll just 
note that um, we've, you know, as so we've gone through this and we've developed the wave equation taking a variety of different approaches, we, we can see here that in this particular case, remember this constant, the constant multiplying the second uh, temporal derivative is 1 over the uh, velocity. And so that, that's going to be uh, k over rho 0. And so now we're, we're using this capital V here as the wave, as the wave propagation velocity. So we're, we'll, we'll be doing this consistently, hopefully, from here on out. Uh, but I'll probably keep reminding you uh, um, and uh, be a little bit of a nuisance that way, perhaps. But it's always good to have reminders. And, and, and we also came up earlier on when we dealt with the, the one-dimensional case here that we have the velocity was equal to uh, Young's modulus over the uh, over the density. So, in summary, just looking at the various forms of the wave equation that we've come up with, we've come up with these uh, velocities. Um, this is a velocity that we you know, we haven't actually derived, and and these were just summarized from the three-dimensional solutions to the uh, wave equation. But we have two forms for the um, compressional wave velocity, uh, one using the Lame parameter, and then over here using the bulk modulus. So we have different factors over here for the shear rigidity. And uh, uh, again, we have the shear wave velocity. So just to emphasize again that uh, V is the wave propagation velocity. And so the next time we're going, you know, we'll, we'll work from the wave equation and all this background work that we've done has really just been to emphasize that we that these different um, relationships fall out of the wave equation and it and it depends on what approach we're taking to solving the wave equation we get these different uh, constants they're all velocities of one sort or another so now as we continue on we're going to be looking at solutions to the wave equation and as we as we, we plug those solutions into the wave equation, we're going to be deriving some other parameters that you're probably familiar with, and those include acoustic impedance, uh, reflectivity, or reflection and transmission coefficients. So that's where we're going to be going um, from here. So we're actually finished deriving the wave equation. We've derived it uh, uh, several times, and uh, we've, we've shown that we get uh, velocities, uh, wave propagation velocities uh, uh, that uh, uh, are a little bit different depending on the approach that we've taken. And now we're going to be moving on and looking at uh, simple solutions to the wave equation and uh, seeing how terms like the acoustic impedance, uh, reflectivity, and transmissivity uh, pop out of those solutions. So thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time.